We're going to talk about something that is right up to date. It, the problem was just created yesterday. Oh, no, I'm making a mistake there. It was created 5,000 years ago. And that is when governments screw up and make things difficult and they interfere in the market, believe it or not, even 5,000 years ago, they understood about market because markets are pretty natural. And, uh, you know, there's barter, there's bartering and all kinds of things. And then they had government money. And all of a sudden, there, there were problems. And they've existed ever since. The wage and price controls. That is to solve the problems of all the mistakes that the government makes. That's how I look at it. And guess what? It makes things worse. And uh, you never would have guessed that when, when the politicians get involved in trying to correct the mistakes that they made, Sometimes it's deliberate, sometimes it's out of total ignorance, but they generally make things uh, much worse. You know, it's interesting, it is a big deal in history and in economics, the wage and price control. And, uh, you know, I'm not all that old, but I do remember uh, three major times that wage and price controls uh, were introduced in this country, and a lot of minor times too. But the major times was I remember World War II very clearly. Um, my dad was in the retail uh, dairy business and would sell butter, and we as little kids knew about stamps, you know, rationing stamps. And uh, we'd have to collect the stamps and the money if somebody came to our, our little dairy, which was actually at our house. We had to do both, collect the money and collect the stamps. So we, we learned about that very early on. Uh, and then I finally figured it out later on that all that activity had nothing to do with helping helping the people. Uh, it, the purpose was, along with selling war bonds, uh, you know, the war bonds, uh, we need your help. But, you know, that isn't the way they finance the war. They finance the war with printing money. And then they'd come up with this to bring people together. Everybody's going to have food rationing and whatnot. I'll tell you what, just from personal experience, it didn't even, it didn't even operate there because I had some family members, including my dad, who was really strict by the rules. You follow the rules and you don't mess around with a government regulation. Before we continue, Help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I can recall him that when the people that would, that would bring the uh, meat into town, uh, the black market meat uh, that wasn't available anyway, so, and everybody knew they were coming. So on Saturday afternoon, everybody cried around. The interesting part that dawned on me years later was it was across the street from the police station. <laughs> and uh, but people would go there. So people people got around it, and it it was it was ordered to make get people to uh, join in in the effort and uh, maybe it was to distract by who's causing what kind of trouble. Second time, Korea War. Wage, uh, uh, wage and price controls then, uh, and and that that wasn't as bad as what happened in World War II. But the one that I remember very clearly uh, was in the early 1970s when Bretton Woods broke down and the prices were going up rapidly. And Nixon, that was one of the reasons the Bretton Woods broke down. They couldn't maintain this fake gold standard any longer. So they, uh, you know, those they put on wage and wage and price controls to control things from, from get, getting out of hand. And, of course, that uh, d didn't solve the problem at all. But the one thing I remember clearly about that, I remember the day they, the wage and price controls were put on, uh, which would have been like uh, the 16th of uh, August, the day afterwards. The, r the rules were written, and all of a sudden the prices were controlled. And all of a sudden, all the business people had to think about, you know, to replace what they had, whether it was gasoline or whatever, the prices would go up uh, a lot, you know, and it was, uh, it, it, and then the market uh, went down and the unemployment it was really, really a mess. To me, it was the one time when I could see the difference between a mismanaged economy, a central economically planned economy that was failing and there was relative liberty versus the time there was no price, no pricing. They destroyed the pricing mechanism and it shut down everything quickly. So it was just overnight 
course, it lasted a, a year or two, and uh, they, it was never smooth. But And those ideas have never gone away. I would say, Chris, today we don't have quite the same, but price controls and, and interference by the government is always messing around with the prices. Today, it's uh, in a way more sinister because it's directed to one company versus another company. It's used with protectionism and sanctions and these sort of the things. Always interfering with the most important thing in an economy. You can't, you can't run a voluntary economy without voluntary pricing. So mm -hmm. that's why it's so damaging. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1000 I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1000 My name is Marco Stan and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Marcus Dan.